Hi, everybody. This is Jeff Overture from WTFRadio.me. I'm sitting here talking to Tom Seaborn. Hey, Tom, what do you think about the uh, Taekwondo team uh, fighting in the Olympics this year? Well, I'm so glad that Taekwondo is still an Olympic sport. It's had its troubles, I'll tell you. It became an Olympic sport in 88. Well, actually not a medal sport, but just an exhibition. And it's had tough time. You know, uh, I'll tell you, a lot of, just like any of the sports, there's been some mismanagement here and there. And and sometimes I have some funny stories about some of the coaching. Uh, when I was on the U.S. team in 1979 and 1980, uh, one of the coaches suggested to one of the players, and, and the, the Olympic team members are called players, not uh, whatever. They, that, that's what I'm referring to when I say players. And, um, you know, they have to make weight. They have to be at their, just like boxing, they have certain weight divisions. And one of the coaches told one of the players that uh, in order to make weight, drink lots of Cokes because the, the fizzy carbonated water will burn the fat. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I mean, there's a I lot of misinformation. Skinny. Oh yeah. yeah, a lot of crazy misinformation out there. And um, we were going to go over. Well, we did. We went over to Germany uh, to fight in the World Championships. And so what we did for two weeks, Jeff, instead of uh, you know adjusting our time clocks when we got there, we trained on German time in the U.S. So that meant we would try to sleep during the day. And then we would train at night, but, you know, we'd be falling in potholes while we're running. Uh, nobody could sleep because, we, you know, it, would, it was adjusting our time clocks. And, and when we went over there, we had two weeks to to be on the German time clock. So, so yeah, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that uh, the coaching nowadays is, is bad, but uh, I'm afraid that, like any traditional sport, uh, karate, taekwondo, sometimes uh, many of the coaching practices may not be up to par as to what's going on in the real world. Well, uh, I saw, just at a glance, I noticed that Korea won four gold medals and the United States got none. And uh, I thought that the United States per- had a pretty good showing in taekwondo throughout the years. Yeah, Steven Lopez and his sister Diana have been doing great in the Olympics in the previous few years. In fact, Steven's amazing. But Taekwondo is the Koreans' national sport. And, uh, you know, the, you, you'll be amazed, Jeff, at the, the training that they do over there, the difference, the intensity, uh, the fact that they're almost required to get a gold medal. And when they don't, I mean, their their lives, you know, the rest of their lives, they live in shame. It's, it's <laughs> different. It's, it's, it's so different than in the United States. Their expectation and, level is high. Oh, absolutely. You know, again, that's their national sport. And, and all through the years, uh, Korea usually wins the team title, uh, and especially the lighter weight divisions. The, the heavier weight divisions sometimes go to the Europeans, sometimes to the Americans, but uh, are the lightweight divisions definitely uh, Koreans, uh, the Asian type countries? Yeah, yeah, they're good kickers. I'll tell you that. I lost one uh, a Taekwondo fighter once in Jack Wong's tournament, the American Open, and it was one of his <laughs> yeah. black belts. And I thought surely I was going to win, but I didn't. You know, he. Well, you know, the, the funny thing is, Jeff, that um, in a Taekwondo tournament with the World Taekwondo Federation rules, the Olympic, the Olympic style rules. Uh, it, it favors kicking, obviously, over punching. Uh, since you can't punch to the face, then that allows you, as a kicker, to throw techniques that you would never throw in a regular full contact match because you just get punched in the face in the middle of your technique. Right. Yeah. So that's why, uh, you know, when when kicker a kicker versus a puncher, uh, you know, if if you can only punch to the body. Uh, it, it's really difficult to score to the body in Taekwondo in, the, in this Olympic style. For example, uh, you have to hit your opponent so hard, they call it trembling shock. If you don't hit him that hard to pretty much move him or knock him down, then you won't get a point. So that's why everybody kicks, and uh, very few of these guys punch. Oh, okay. Well, as a, as a whole, I don't know if you've been keeping up with the Olympics that much, but... Um... I was kind of worried about uh, the United States finishing behind China as far as gold medals go. Uh, is that going to be 
there's going to be different uh, sports coming up or events coming up that are going to favor the United States more. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, later you mean in the next, you have, you mean in the next couple of days, you mean? Yeah, exactly. Because <clears throat> as a start out of the gate, China was pretty much kicking our ass. I mean, as far as gold medals go, I know we're tied or close to it, um, but as far as being dominant, yet we're not. China has been more dominant, right? And and if you're following some of the backstory about the Chinese. Uh, the swimmer who they're suspecting may have been in some sort of uh, doping situation. You know, the one that beat Ryan Lochte's uh, speed in in swimming, and she's she's just a youngster. And uh, when you, when you hear the stories of of these Chinese who started training at age three because they had the genetic capability and they were kept away from their families, and you may have heard of the story where. Uh, one of the uh, Olympians, the Chinese Olympic on the Olympic team, her grandmother died, and they wouldn't tell her that her grandmother died because they didn't want it to affect her performance. So their mindset is so different than ours. It's they they raise these kids from early on to become Olympic champions, and everything is for the state. Whereas you know in the U.S., uh, especially amateur sports, uh, you know it's we're having a good time, you know, drinking Cokes, eating popcorn, training, and it's not to the same level. And so you, you have reason to worry about our medal count, I'm afraid. <laughs> well, I'm kind of wondering if it has a little bit to do with like an AD, ADD generation or everybody gets a trophy to participate or uh, <laughs> the lack of discipline as children uh, growing up because of laws and press and Facebook and all these different outlets that can just roast a parent for disciplining their child, or um, as far as focus goes, focus issues. Oh, no, you have a really good point. I, I think uh, with the advent of the internet and everybody's just interested in quick news bites and sound bites, and nobody wants to train hard anymore. I, I teach in a college, and oh, it's, it's so different now. You know the way kids come in and try to get by with as little as possible. It, Kids used to work hard, and it's few and far between now to find people that really want to work hard. You're right. I, I think our mentality, uh, and look at look at the obesity, look at the way we're eating, look at the way nobody seems to care about health and fitness anymore either. So, yeah, when you combine all that along with uh, the fact that there's little discipline and no more perseverance because – if it, does, if it lasts more than five minutes, people don't want to be involved. So uh, you've got a good point. I don't know. I don't know the answer, but uh, that may be part of it. I mean, obviously, we have some great gold medalists that are coming through for us, and a variety, you know, Michael Felt and all this, the swimming, the tennis. I mean, we've got some players that are that are coming through, but uh, I don't know whether we're going to beat the Chinese this year or not. A great question. We will in basketball. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that's that's one. We we better not lose any any more, uh, you know, or anything in basketball because uh, yeah, the talent. I mean, that would that would be just horrendous. I noticed that at the start of the last game, it was kind of close in the beginning of the game, and uh, the United States was passing the ball. They were dishing and everything else, and uh, they were trying to play team basketball. And then about I guess in the second half, that went out the window. It turned yeah. into street ball, and the United States just started killing them. I think it was 110 <laughs> to 67 or 57. I don't know what it was, but it was a real beating. Wow. Yeah. <clears throat> just yeah. playing off skill and talent, and and everybody's just saying, hey, shoot. If you got – don't pass on the shot, just shoot. <laughs> that is funny. You're right. Because, I mean, talent-wise, nobody should be able to beat the U.S., but uh, you're right. If it were all based on the fact that a lot of these teams, it's like they've been – professional playing for years with each other whereas all 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 of our all-stars they're awesome individuals but as a team they haven't worked together but that's why they say Shashetsky is the perfect coach because he can bring these guys together and uh yeah I think they'll win just on talent alone I was just curious if if it's possible that the overall demeanor of the United States of America going through this severe recession and unstable uh political climate like both parties just going to each other's throats and um, the United States as a whole as far as attitude goes I was wondering if that might be affecting the passion that people might have when they approach an 
any endeavor, like your students, like schoolwork, um, like uh, anything else like that? Yeah, I mean, boy, that could be the topic of a book because uh, I, I think you're right that what's going on nationally does affect us at the local level, at the you know individual athletic level. And there's always going to be those Olympians that have been training their whole lives, so it didn't affect them, you know, as far as they're, they've been focused since they were four years old. Right. You know, the U.S. guys. But, uh, you know, I mean, the, the way we're moving and with all the entitlements and people – thinking they don't have to work to achieve, then, then you're right. Uh, that, that may especially play a role in, in future Olympics if, if we continue on the road we are right now. And that, that's my opinion. Well, it's not over yet. I hope we start pulling it out here pretty quick. But we tied him in medals yesterday. You know, that, congratulations to Michael Phelps. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I was glad. And his team, I mean, his team, you know, they had like two, link, two or three links ahead when he hit the water. And, of course, he's not going to lose when he has that. But, you know, it was just great for him to get that extra medal and to set yeah. a record and to be the most highly awarded uh, Olympian in history. So I think that was fantastic. That was a good highlight for us. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, those, those type of stories, that'll, that'll be motivation maybe for our future generations. And that uh, 39-year-old woman, Kristen Armstrong, just won the – uh, the time trial, and that's that's saying a lot. You now, know, what, what event was she in? She was in the uh, cycling time trial. Uh, it, it's an event where you're not competing against other people at the same time. You're you're on your own. You're you're just. It's called the race of truth, where it's just uh, you you follow a route based on your speed, but you're not you're not like in a peloton, like in a group, and you're not. Is it on a speed anybody. track? Is it on a speed they, track? No, no, this is, this is on the road. Uh, but she, she had a great story. She, she just had a child and didn't think she was ever going to compete again and then recently broke her collarbone but came back after that. And to win an Olympic gold medal, that, that's, that's a great, awesome story. Again, hopefully motivation for kids when they're watching that and they say, wow, I want to be like her. So that, that was cool. That, I think that just happened this morning, so that, that was pretty good. I haven't seen that one yet. I'll check that out later. They'll broadcast it later, I'm sure. Yeah. Okay, Tom. Yeah. Well, hey, man, I appreciate the input today because I know the Olympics is on everybody's mind right now. And uh, is there anything in regards to uh, uh, training methods today? Because I've noticed there's a lot of this CrossFit and there's all these other various uh, forms of training, Zumba and all this other stuff. Do you think our training is starting to uh, – turn away from the ABCs or is it improving or what's your opinion on that? Is there like more fads than reality or what would you say? <laughs> yeah. It, it, you know, it, this ties into your last point about, you know, the short attention span Americans. And, and we even discussed it in our previous show that, uh, when, when I trained in Okinawa, we did the same thing six nights a week, two hours a night, and there was no variation, but, if you tried to do that in the U.S., you know, people would quit the next day. They, they don't have that discipline. And that's why, in my opinion, all these fads come out, whether it's CrossFit. I mean, some of them are going are gonna to hang around for a while. But uh, it is, you're, you're making a great point that the next new fad, if you can be the one to create it, then you will be a millionaire. And it's, it's just a question of developing something that's different because there's nothing new under the sun, whether it's, CrossFit, Zumba, uh, any any of the different programs are really just repackaged something that was done in the old days. Kettlebells right now is real popular. That was done in the old days. I mean, so in answer to your question, I think there's a, a there's a good thing about it in that you know Americans are innovative enough to to create these programs out of uh, programs that had existed in the past, and it it provides some people that didn't have any interest in training that little bit of extra motivation to do something because it is different. But with what you originally said about getting back to the basics, the ABCs, uh, you're right. I mean, when we're constantly needing to rework our programs, uh, there's some people that say, don't do the same workout program two workouts in a row uh, because your body needs to adapt. Well, that's not necessarily true. And, and yet that's the that's what's pervading the US right now. It's like, oh, you've got to change up your program and that's why a lot of these new fads are really popular because 
everything changes every second, so you never lose your supposedly your motivation or your short and, attention span. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Because people yeah. can't do what focus. Yeah, people exactly. have focus issues because every time I ride my bike, it's the same twenty two, twenty three miles. It's the same path, but guess what? My body responds to it every single time because it doesn't have a choice. I mean, it's like you're going to breathe hard. You're going to push hard. You're going to sweat. You're going to burn calories and you're going to get an incredible cardiovascular workout. And I, and so how can you lose, you know, you know, how can you miss on that? Okay. Well, listen, man, I appreciate your input and, uh, I'll give you a holler again here soon and we'll keep this up. All right, my friend. All right, Jeff. Thanks for calling, man. Okay. Bye. Okay, bye.